Welcome to Epic Stock Due Diligence. Please subscribe at youtube.com forward slash epic stock dd. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Epic Stock Due Diligence. Uh, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It's youtube.com forward slash Epic Stock DD. And also feel free to check out my book if you want to. I'm not here trying to pump my book, but if you want to check it out, go to the main page of youtube.com forward slash Epic Stock DD. You'll see that picture of me up there in front of that bull on Broadway and it says buy my book. It's on an iTunes store, costs a few bucks. Anyway, what I want to talk about today is the uh, the morning madness with penny stocks when the market first opens when the when the when the opening bell goes ding 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 and things start uh, getting exciting often there's an extreme amount of price per share fluctuation and, and I'm this is tailored to penny stocks but often it's not uncommon for a uh, uh, for a stock that possibly the day before had an insane price per share increase and then the next day when the market opens immediately it's like boom 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 just rapidly down ticking rapidly 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 down ticking now what why is that the case well you may have seen my other video where I talk about amateur hour an amateur hour is typically the first hour I mean it doesn't have to be an hour on the dot but typically the first hour or so uh, when the market opens and it's, it's a situation where people, they may have seen the, uh, the huge gains. They may have been in the day before. Hypothetically, let's say they're up a few hundred percent in one day of trading. And then the next day, the market opens and, and initially it ticks up maybe 5%. And then it ticks down about 10 and it's going to 15, 20, 30. And now it's hitting 50% down just in that single day of trading and people start to panic. So... It's one of those things, a lot of these shakes are orchestrated uh, from the standpoint that people are, people, traders that have large positions of a particular stock, those traders, what they'll often do is uh, they'll let go of a seemingly significant portion of their stock. Keep in mind, a stock that in the past may have been trading in the triple zero range, and let's just say hypothetically now it's in the double zero range. So someone speculatively, let's just say a year before, loaded up, they bought, uh, let's just say 10 million shares. So before commission and all of that, roughly around $1,000 speculative investment. So then the stock heats up. They got those shares at triple zero one. They've been sitting on them for a long time. The stock heats up. I mean, it's, it's in the double zero range. The, the previous trading day, it went up a few hundred percent. It's just on fire. Well, let's say it's approaching the end of the week because typically you'll find that Fridays, Fridays are typically a down day with the stock market, at least in the morning. And then typically what'll happen if, if people really wanna run a stock on the Monday, because Mondays are typically up days, typically what'll happen is that on a Friday, you'll see an, a sharp downward trend and then possibly in the last hour of the day, which is referred to as power hour, uh, the last hour of market open, you may start to see some volume because it's gearing up for the, for the Monday open. But <laughs> what's funny about this, and again, this video is for entertainment purposes only. It should not be considered a recommendation to buy or sell security. I share this in all videos for entertainment purposes only. But a typical scenario that might happen so hypothetically, a person that had uh, 10 million shares of fictitious company XYZ, and they had purchased those triple zero one price per share, you know, $1,000 before commission out of their pocket, and they're feeling good. And you know, they, they, wanna take, they wanna take a profit. They wanna take a significant profit because not only do they wanna cover their, uh, their initial speculative investment, which in that case, this hypothetical example would have been $1,000 before commission, 
So they want to take some off the table, but they also, they want to shake people. You know, this is probably a Friday morning. They want to, they want to give that stock a shake. So may, let's just say out of those 10 million, maybe they dump 500,000 and then they dump another 500,000. Now that's a million volume. And then all of a sudden they said, you know what, I'm going to get rid of another million. That's 2 million shares that granted to them, those 2 million shares are only around 200 bucks because they got them at triple zero one. But those 2 million shares, when that stock's trading in the double zero range, that becomes more noticeable. And what often will happen is that traders, especially traders that watch level two, also known as L2 or market depth, uh, they'll start to see uh, in the uh, time and sell information in L2, uh, they'll start to see the, uh, the, the hits at the, at the bid side. And again, remember the fence. You've got the bid and the ask. And the bid is what one would expect to receive if they tried to let go of shares they had in their possession. The ask is what one would expect to pay if they tried to add shares to their position. Maybe they already had shares, maybe they didn't have any. The ask is what they'll be looking at. But in this scenario where, where the trader that had 10 million shares from cheap triple zero one price per share range, they start dumping and then people watching time and sell information are noticing like, oh man, those are hitting at the bid, they're not hitting at the ask, which implies that someone is, uh, is letting go of shares they already own. And then when you watch L2, level two, you'll start to see the, uh, uh, the, the bid is starting to fall. And when the bid falls, of course the ask follows. So let's say hypothetically stock opened at uh, dot zero zero five. Now maybe it's down to dot zero zero four. And then maybe uh, when it hits that, maybe the trader or traders that, you know, they had those cheap shares, they want to let go a little bit more, it dips down into the threes. It dips down below the dot zero zero four. So when it does that, then it alerts more people because there's various levels of risk tolerance that people have. So when they start to see a stock rapidly decline, especially in the in the early morning hours, typically, and that's why they call it the uh, the amateur hour, because typically what less less experienced and or less risk tolerant penny stock speculators will do is that they'll see that and they'll be like, oh man, I got to get out. You know, I'm still up X percent from day before. You know, I'm starting to go into the red now, that sort of thing. So they'll try to exit. And then that adds more volume at the bid. The stock continues to go down. Now, typically what the trader would do, the smart trader, the smart speculative, the smart trader that loves to speculate, that hypothetically unloaded 2 million shares, they're already predicting that. They knew that the day before was a big day, huge percentage increase. It's the end of the week, typically a down day. They're waiting on that to go down. So when they exited at market open around .005 and started the, uh, <laughs> the fun, they may re-enter at .0035, so they may keep, uh, they may keep, so they sold two million hypothetically, and then they may put um, the, uh, the money received from, from that uh, sale of, of the other million, they may just put that back in at .0035 or whatever. So they're getting more shares cheap because of the dip. And they've still cashed out and, and more than covered their, uh, their initial uh, speculative investment in this scenario of $1,000 because they've got 10 million shares at .0001. So I hope this illustrates the types of things that go on behind the scenes because it's easy for anyone to look at a penny stock quote. It's easy for anyone to look at level two. And it's easy for anyone to to fall into the uh, trap of watching the forums and thinking that certain people are, are accurate sources of information and, and they're always right or they're always wrong and there's no way this stock could go down or that sort of thing. But when you really look at a stock and you do your own due diligence and you question, why did this happen? Why is this happening? I've seen something similar before and you try to connect all the dots. Uh, that's obviously why I never, and I never will, and I, I appreciate everyone's viewership, but I'm not here to teach. I'm here to entertain. I'm not here to offer uh, stock advice because I don't even trust my own. Uh, when, when I'm entertaining myself with stocks, I don't even trust my own judgment. It's always a crapshoot. You know, you should always expect to lose it all. And, and that's, uh, but it's, it's one of those things, if you really challenge yourself, 
to look at this as more than just going into a casino. I mean, it, ultimately it's a casino, but if you look at it like, well, you know, I can be a detective and I can figure out this, that, and the other. You're going to find a lot of, if, if you enjoy the stock market, you're going to discover a, a game that should provide years of, of entertainment. And like I said, I've been trading stocks since the early days of internet technologies, and it's, it's always been entertaining. And that was back when they had the brick and mortar, <laughs> the brick and mortar broker. So there was no logging into the internet because the internet at that point in time wasn't even, it was AOL, CompuServe, and Prodigy. So you didn't log in to go to a broker. You drove down the street with a check in hand and said, I want to buy this or sell that. And the internet, of course, that has opened up the uh, speed at which these things trade. So it's really changed the way the game works. And it's, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to conclude this video because, I mean, I could ramble on and on, and, and I want to create a lot more videos. So I, I really appreciate your viewership. And, and again, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash epicstockdd. Check out my book if you want to, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Y'all have a good day.